Okay. Now that's back up in the space the correct way. And now I'm going to begin. And when I finish, then I'm going to bring Tanya in and eventually Chris in. Uh, tonight, I decided um, there was so much material that I could do. I mean, I, we could do this every day. I mean, there's always something to be learned. I mean, just as a recap, we, right from the beginning, we've talked about Mental Health Awareness Month because that's what this is. Um, we've opened up spaces so that people can talk after I, I'm done. So if they have questions or concerns or they want to share their own personal testimony, they can. I welcome everybody from around the world should people come from other, other countries eventually or could just be us. I've always said it doesn't matter if there's one person in the room or a quadrillion. My objective is to bring about an understanding of mental health and to try to destroy the stigma so that people will become more open to discussing it among their own family members, friends, and peers. Right now, there is still some skepticism on that. So I decided whether you have a mental health illness or not to talk about stress. Well, I want to give you a little overview. Stress is a normal response to a situation as situational pressures or demands, especially if they are perceived as threatening or dangerous. Stress is the result of brain chemicals called hormones. Surging through the body, the hormones make people sweat, breathe quicker, tense their muscles, and prepare them prepared to take action. When this happens, a person's built-in alarm system, their fight or flight responses or response becomes activated to protect them. A certain amount of stress is, no, is a normal part of daily life. Small doses of stress help people meet deadlines. And by the way, if you have a piece of paper and pen, you might want to take notes or write your questions down or comments, etc. Uh, be prepared for presentations. Be productive and arrive on time for important events. However, long-term stress can become harmful. When stress becomes overwhelmingly and prolonged, the risk for mental health problems and medical problems increase. <clears throat> long-term stress increases the risk of mental health problems such as anxiety and depression, substance use problems, sleep problems, pain and bodily complaints, such as muscle tension. It also increases the risk of medical problems, such as headaches, gastrointestinal, I can't, let me try that again, gastrointestinal problems, a, weak, a weakened immune system, difficulty uh, conceiving high blood pressure, cardiac or cardio, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. Now, what would the signs and the symptoms be? The signs and symptoms of stress may be cognitive, which means thinking related, emotional, physical, or behavioral. Their severity can range from mild to severe. Cognitive symptoms include difficulty concentrating or thinking, memory problems, negative or lack of self-confidence, constant worrying, difficulty making decisions. Emotional symptoms include moodiness, low morale, irritability, feeling hopeless or helpless, feeling apprehensive, anxious or nervous, feeling depressed, feeling unhappy or guilt or guilty, feeling agitated or unable to relax. Physical symptoms include headaches, muscle tension or other physical pain or discomfort, stomach problems, nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting, loss of sex drive, rapid heart rate, high blood pressure, fatigue. Here's some behavioral symptoms include changes in eating or sleeping patterns, Social withdrawal, nervous habits such as nail biting, teeth grinding, or foot tapping. Increased use of caffeine, cigarettes, alcohol, or other drugs. 
neglect family, excuse me, neglect of family or work responsibilities, decline in performance or productivity. Stress often results if a person feels that there are high pressures or demands that there, <clears throat> excuse me, that there, that there is a threat to their well-being or that they don't have enough resources to cope with the demands. Common sources of stress include a person's physical environment, like a no like noisy uh, streets or an unsafe living space, relationships, work, life situations, and major life changes. These situations can include negative events such as financial problems, relationship breakup, difficulties at work or school, injury, illness or death, and grieving. However, Situations leading to stress can also include positive changing, such as work promotion, getting married, or buying a house. Because stress is a normal part of life, everyone experiences it. However, the intensity, frequency, and duration of stress will be different for each person. Numerous factors can make the experience of stress worse, such as when people have limited social support, have multiple stressors, have difficulty relating or balancing their emotions, have difficulty tolerating uncertainty or distress, lack of self-confidence, or do not feel they can cope with the stressors, interpret the stressors negatively so that they feel powerless, overwhelmed, or helpless. Now, here's the diagno diagnosis and treatment. Practicing self-care is important for reducing stress. Some good ways to reduce and manage stress include eating well, exercising regularly, trying to reduce negativity, prioritizing leisure, uh, leisure time, limiting alcohol and caffeine and avoiding cigarettes and other drugs, and adopting proper sleep pra practices. Other ways to help reduce and cope with stress include prioritizing, organizing and delegating tasks, seeking support from family and friends, attending a support group or stress management program, consulting a healthcare professional or accessing self-help materials. Once a person feels a sense of emotional well-being, they feel stronger and more able to bounce back from stress. This helps them um, that they can cope better with difficulty, excuse me, with difficult life events. Severe stress may be a symptom of anxiety disorder. Seek professional help. If the signs and symptoms of stress uh, have been present for a long period of time, if you're functioning at work, school, home, or socially or socially is affected, or if you experience increasing stress and emotional difficulties, recovery from chronic stress is possible. Now, I'm going to ask Tanya to bring up, like she did the other day, about the importance of getting your hormones checked, as had also been discussed in the very beginning of the article that I read. I think that this article actually may be out of Canada. Um, I don't think it's here in the U.S., but I thought it was a spot-on article. I'm a layman. I'm not a licensed uh, social worker. I'm not a doctor. I have no medical license whatsoever other than adver advanced first aid. So, and, and nobody in this current space has any kind of degree either. So all the credit goes uh, to whoever wrote this article and not to me. And Tanya, she'll tell you herself, she's not a nurse, she's not a doctor, but she works with them and she hears what they say. And so she's been doing this a very long time, understands about hormones for men and especially for women. So I'd like her to discuss that again right now, because I believe it's important. And then when she's done prior to me opening it up, I do have a couple of questions that I would like to propose to whoever's in the room and then and we will invite you up to speak. Uh, right now, I'm going to invite um, Chris. I need you to go ahead and uh, mute your microphone. Tanya, I'd like you um, to go ahead. And can you hear? Can you, hear? you can hear. Yeah, of course I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, go ahead, Tanya. 
You sound great, Chris. Thank you, Michael. So um, I wanted to touch base with everyone of the importance of stress and hormones. So there's this hormone that we create when we're stressed out. It's called cortisol. I think we, a lot of us, sometimes it smells, uh, some people, it smells really, really bad when they're stressed out. You got to start sweating and it, and it does affect a lot of different parts of your body. Um, the, uh, you know, it's inflammation to the body. So um, they believe that the stress factor of this, if you want to live longer, you got to learn to control your stress. The stress hormones that, are, are, that can trigger certain uh, things in your body, like the fight or flight response, um, the heart races, your breath quickens, your muscles ready for action. This response is designed to protect your body in an emergency um, by preparing you to react quickly. But then this stress response keeps firing day after day, constantly. Um, it could put, uh, put your health at serious risk. That's why when I, I, I say this all the time, inflammation causes cancer. Inflammation causes a lot of different um, health disorder that um, we don't know. You know, a lot of time people think that, oh, I, I, all of a sudden I, I developed this or this happened because I was stressed out. But then it never occurred to them that they, no one's ever stopped and say, hey, what is the exact uh, reason why I am stressed and why I'm behaving this way or why my body is doing this? Instead, most of the time they go to the doctor and the doctor gives some medication instead of looking at what is the cause of it. It could be like, you know, that th their diet has changed. They had, you know, um, diabetes that they didn't know of. So again, I'm not a doctor or a nurse. Um, it, I work with a whole bunch of doctors. I've been doing in this industry since 2002. Um, so when I talk to people, I try to be very mindful about what's going on because not in functional and in integrative medicine, not all, um, I say a pair of socks, shoes fit every with the same, you know, not everyone's made equally. They went different. And one person's stress stressor could be someone else's stressor. That's diff totally different. It doesn't stress them out. They, it, they react a different way. So again, Everyone needs, you know, has a different way of dealing with stress. You should always go see your doctor. And it does cause a lot of uh, unbalance in a person, especially for mental illness. I did a whole study where I, was, I started researching where women who are premenopausal who do not go get themselves checked and they all of a sudden they develop, um, the doctor deem them as bipolar. And instead of taking a look at their hormones or even their, you know, the estrogen, if they even have any testosterone in them, all that, most doctors will go ahead and give them a prescription of Prozac or something instead of trying to figure out maybe there's something else. So um, if anytime you're feeling like you're overstressed and things aren't working right and you're feeling ache and body pain and that neck twitch and, the, you know, all that, go see your doctor uh, and maybe just unplug, walk, walk on the grass a little bit, go water your plants, do those things because Stress can, can cause a lot of different things in your body that you don't, you can only even realize. So those are my thoughts. Thank you for letting me have the mic, Michael. Well, you don't, mind, you don't have to thank me. You and Chris are my co-hosts, and I, you know, <laughs> I appreciate everything you and Chris do for me. It's appreciated, and I know Tanya and Chris. I know you do a lot for others as well. Um, but I did have a couple of questions, like for the signs and symptoms. I'm wondering, and if anybody would like to. Um, respond that's that's a listener um please feel free to request the mic on the bottom left hand side just press it and either tanya or chris or myself will let you up and you'll be allowed to say whatever you want to say within the scope of what we're talking about or personal testimony i know that i have a mental health issue with depression and i take one pill and it makes a, a big difference. There was a time, and I've shared this before, uh, and Tanya obviously can attest to this because she was sweet enough to stick by me through thick and thin. Uh, I decided not to take the medicine anymore. And as a result, I ended up going into the hospital twice. Once wasn't overnight, and the second time was overnight. Um, and of course, it was just from the medication. So I had a call. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I went forward with something else. But going back to what I originally started to tell you is when I got off of my medication, I started talking to myself. I started going to two different coffee shops, sitting there in the back. And all of a sudden, I'd start crying out of the blue, not knowing why. I'd say things that absolutely didn't make any sense. 
my facial expressions were that of somebody with severe uh, problems. I'll word it that way. Um, and I knew I was doing it, but I couldn't control it, which I thought was weird that I knew I was doing it. And I still couldn't stop myself. I would come home. My mother stayed here with me. Uh, they took the keys away from me. So I couldn't drive because I didn't know where I was. Um, and that we finally, we, my mother had me call my psychologist and she said I was suffering from a withdrawal from a very strong psych uh, depression pill, whatever you would call it. So for two weeks, I had to go back on the same pill for 10 milligrams. And then once the two weeks were up, I went back up to 20, which is what I was supposed to be. And then I straightened out and then they gave me the keys. It was one time while I was here. It took me literally 20 minutes or longer to find my cord for my telephone, mm -hmm. my cell phone to plug in. And it was right in front of my face. I would undress, put on my bathroom, go out. And I was about to leave the house. My mother would say, where are you going? So it's important. If you have a mental illness, don't stop taking your meds. If you want to stop, talk to your clinician, doctor, whoever he or she is. And let them wean you off of it so you don't ever have to go through anything remotely close to what I went through. I won't ever do that again. So one of the questions that I have, it's, it's talking about the signs and symptoms. And again, you can request the mic and we'll let you up. Uh, the signs and the symptoms of stress may be cognitive, meaning thinking related, emotional, physical, or behavioral. Their severity can range from mild to severe. Cognitive symptoms include Difficulty concentrating or thinking. That was that was me. Memory problems. Well, I had a stroke or a TIA back in 2016. And as most of you who know me in, in the other spaces that I am allowed into, um, I sometimes forget midstream what I'm saying. Uh, and that's due to that. Um, so my question is, does anybody else in this space suffer from any of these uh, symptoms that were discussed, including the emotional ones like moodiness, low morale, irritability, feeling hopeless or helpless, uh, feeling apprehensive, anxious, nervous, etc., feeling depressed, unhappy, or guilty. Anybody else like that feel like that? Please just come on the mic. I never felt like that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. I, I'm like, I, I think, you know, um, Again, you know, people, certain things can happen to people in their lives and, and, and what, how you handle it and how, you know, and also reflex, you know, you, you subconscious and then conscious level of thinking. So when you have subconscious thinking, you, I was, you know, my family would say we're yellers. So I, I grew up with yelling and you got to realize I escaped Vietnam too for the war. So I'm used to a lot of loud, you know, and that's, that's the kind of stuff that makes me stop what I'm doing and I instead of freaking out I tend to be I handle stress better than most people where I'm so very calm very collective I'm very because I was raised to my my family were yellers and I was ra raised to escape a country during a war so you know dealing with stress is a different thing for me um, but uh, again you know everyone has a different way how they handle stress certain people have a tick when they get upset they tick some people uh, stutter. Some people make some different noises. So again, stress does those things. Um, I went ahead and pinned on the nest the uh, effects of stress on your body. It, it's a really nice article by Healthline. I follow them. They, they're very um, scientific driven. So take a look at that when you get a chance. You can see all the different things that it causes and, and it goes hand in hand with the mental health. So, But I want to say hi to uh, our good friend Chris, uh, Social Audio Guys in Space, and also uh, Symbiotic. How are you? Daniel, how are you, how's it going? And then Nerdin, thank you for joining us. But um, yeah, the, that's how I feel. I feel like when I'm not feeling right, I, I, the only time I felt unwell is when I was going through my menopause in the early days, you know, like eight years ago, and I figured it out. But um, the thing is when people don't understand that what's going on with them, they it does affect them. So thank goodness I understood. Yeah, I see that we've got a couple people that want to come up. I'm going to go to Symbol and then to Chris. And go ahead, uh, Symbolic Assessment, Assignment, whatever. Thanks. Uh, good evening, Daniel. Michael. Good evening, Ty. Hey, Tanya. Hey, how are you? 
Uh, good evening, Chris. Uh, good evening, everybody else. Okay. Uh, I guess I could start off by saying that uh, one of the preeminent factors of, of, I would say, an unacknowledged ignorance of uh, a lot of the mental stressors in life is a lot of different environmental factors that we all sometimes want to not acknowledge and probably not want to talk about. It's kind of like the taboo, the thing and elephant in the room that family members don't want to talk about or even stifle the even topical conversation. A lot of it is taboo uh, to a lot of old school families. I know me coming from an Italian background, that's kind of just something you, my mom doesn't even want to acknowledge. My sister doesn't want to acknowledge. My dad, maybe a little bit. But in all practicality terms, um, I'll give, I'll put myself on the burner for a second and say that I know I exhibit those traits only when I have a night of binge drinking or when I, you know, go out and, you know, uh, once a week and then the day after is like a bad hangover and I'm like, oh my God, you know, pity party. But other than that, for the most part, I mean, I was just like Michael, I, to be quite honest with you, I, I had those symptoms uh, not those symptoms, but I exhibited those, you know, those, those traits early on. Um, but I was medicated as well. And I wanted to do everything homeopathically, which means I just wanted to get off the medicine. And I did. And then I replaced medicine with, for me, at least faith or whatever. And then some other things that keep me busy, like video games or, you know, coming on these Twitter spaces and, you know, just running amok in conversation, <laughs> sometimes forgetting what the whole, you know, the whole aim of the conversation was about. But um, yeah, I think the fact of the matter is, is if you really keep yourself as busy as you can, I mean, for me, I don't go to the gym. So <laughs> that's out of the question. You know, I like walking if I have to, but I don't want to force myself to be something or someone I'm not. I'm more of like a bookworm. So if I read books or something like that, you know, surf stuff on the internet, you know, illegally download movies and sometimes video games. That's my thing. I love IT. So that's what I do. But I guess it's just find whatever rocks your boat. You know, uh, for me, sometimes it's just like putting on a Bob Dylan song or a Joan Baez song or Janis Joplin or maybe a Tupac song or whatever. And I think that is like what motivates me. You know, I'll be doing stuff in the kitchen and cleaning dishes or whatever, or, you know, making myself something to, you know, fixing something to eat for dinner or lunch or whatever. And it doesn't really matter. You know, what might work for Tanya on keeping herself motivated might not work for me. What might work for Michael might not work for me either. So I think it's like an individual assessment on, you know, just like self introspection. That being said, that's just how it worked for me. So I'm not saying that whatever worked for me will work for anybody else. But one of the do one of the things I did want to make sure was getting off of the medications because I did not want to have any kind of long term implications on my own personal health. I didn't want to have a doctor's visit every two three months because I was on a behavioral health medication. I just saw that as a hindrance to long-term success and factor of actually being healthy from a physical state. So that was one of the reasons why I got on, like, I can't do this. You know, I don't want to go every three months to the doctor. It's just, it's, it's not worth it. So, and that's why I've been able to really harmonize myself in a very holistic manner. But um, I'll leave them, I'll drop the mic and leave it for everybody else. What's up, Chris? Well, thank you very much for your input, but I just have to caution other listeners. That was fine for him. It seems to be working for him. But those who have mental illnesses, such as major depression disorders, uh, dual diagnosis with mental illness and substance abuse, don't go off your medication. You will not last. Okay. I know several uh, that have tried on their own, and it only made them made their situation worse because they thought they were fine. I'm not downing anything that the last speaker just said it's working for him he sounds highly intelligent i don't have a problem with it if and he'll know if he made a mistake because the people around him will say why are you acting this way or coming out with this they'll see the difference it's somebody just like somebody with bipolar uh, one minute that they, they may be manic and the next minute they might not be so please we encourage you to stay on your medication not come off of it because then if you end up acting out in a behavioral way, in a very violent way, you could get yourself arrested. We don't want you to get into any trouble. We don't want you to do illicit drugs. So that's why I believe it's important for people to stay on their medicine. I'm only bringing it up because 
he had said that you know he's off a bit, and that's fine if that works for him. But I can guarantee you, for the majority of people, it's not going to work if you have a mental illness. Chris, I, I, oh, sorry. Okay, I was going to add real quick one more thing, thing Michael. Okay, uh, I was just going to say real quick, just to, add, to preface what you said. I agree with that. It is individual to my treatment, and I did replace heavily a lot of things, predominantly religion. Um, so I, again, I do want to preface to what Michael said. It, it, it is something that is not going to work for everybody, you know, as he said, and I do completely agree with him on that. Um, my unique situation is unique to myself. So I do not want to say that, you know, seek a medical professional and speak with them before anything else is a big disclaimer. Um, again, myself, I have ADHD and that's one of the things that I've learned how to harness and also live with. Um, but in terms of anxiety and depression, that's only exhibited through my binge drinking when I have a really bad night. <laughs> so, but again, I'll leave this to Chris. I'm sorry. Go ahead. This is exactly why I said you shouldn't. And you know what? To be brutally honest with you, and I'm a layman, I'm not a doctor, but it sounds like even though you got into religion and you sound very intelligent, people with ADD and ADHD, they're never able to tell that they're missing social uh, or societal cues. Uh, they they just don't. I have ADD and ADHD, and I don't need the medicine right now, according to my psychologist. But I can tell you, talking with her as well as um, another one that was a psychiatrist, any of the emotions that you're talking about, like the binge drinking stuff, this is what it's for. Now, faith is is a beautiful thing if you're believing in Jesus, or if you're believing strictly in the old covenant Hashem, uh, or however you believe, that's fine. But God is not against medication either. Um, he allows it. Otherwise, he wouldn't put it on this planet to be developed in a pure way. Now, we know that they can take drugs and do illegal stuff with it, too. Uh, and that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, Chris, go ahead now, please. I'm sorry for the delay. And then it will be 20 time. And then it will be Tim. Chris, are you there? Hey, I'm going to have to come back in like five minutes. Okay. All right. In the interim then, Tim, go ahead. You had your hand up, please. Hey, what's going on? Sorry to butt in. Uh, yeah, my name's Tim. I run a 20-minute uh, podcast on mental health. Uh, I was talking about the medication thing because that happened to me recently. Um, I'm on uh, I'm ADHD, bipolar type 2, and just general anxiety. And uh, I've been on on and off medicine. I was against medicine for the longest time. So right now I'm on like Adderall, uh, Lamictal for a mood stabilizer. And I forget what the other thing is for my uh, anxiety. I just don't take it as much, but it's not like it's like an antihistamine. But I I didn't know with like my Lamictal, like I wasn't taking it regularly because like um, like just my mood in general, I was just like, I'm getting sick of taking it or I can just take it later or double up. And uh, it was probably the worst thing that I could have done. Um, when I finally talked to my therapist and prescriber, they were like, yeah, if you miss like one or two, like you're going to go off the rails. And I did. Um, but like, I know what you guys were having like the same conversation. I just wanted to uh, jump in, but you pretty much nailed everything on the head with that. Um, yeah, definitely not recommended, but there's definitely other outlets. Like uh, uh, the other gentleman was saying, sorry, I forget your name. Um, but like just like going for walks or if that's not into you, like you find something else to do. Um, but that's the best. That's also the best medicine. Like you can do your professional medicine and then you can find like a positive outlook uh, medicine. But yeah, I had a pretty bad spiral not too long ago. Uh, attempted suicide May 5th, 2019. Um, so yeah, having all that fun stuff like we all do, some of us in here. But yeah, I just want to throw my two cents in. Sorry, to, sorry just to jump in. No, Tim, I'm glad that you did. You, you know, um, this is how we all learn because everybody has a certain truth in them, a different ex life experience that, they, that the person can share, and we can glean insight and truth or confirmation from it. So I, I'm honored that you came into the space and said what you said. I do have a question for you, though. Um, are you currently taking your med medication? Oh yeah. This, this, uh, this, um, incident that happened was like probably like a month or so ago and I had to take two weeks off from work and I got like, uh, saw that noise in the background. I don't know what's going on. I had to get like a medical like exempt from work. So like, uh, I had to get like notes and stuff and it was like kind of embarrassing, even though I don't have to disclose my mental health issues to them, but they've been awesome to me and they kind of know that I'm kind of a functioning nut. 
Um, but yeah, I make sure to take it. Um, I think I get distracted easy and lazy because of it. And like, I forget that I have like a computer in my hands and I can just tell Siri to remind me at this hour to take my meds and, and this. So yeah, I'm very, the Lamictal especially, uh, that's what is, uh, the main issue. ADHD is kind of a blessing and a curse. Um, like I'll take my Adderall. They, they tell me to take it every day, but I feel like I don't. And I've talked to them about it and they, they've been like, kind of like, um, they're like, you should take it every day, but there's just some days I'm like, uh, like, I just don't feel like it's, it's doing it. But again, like I'm kind of not practicing what I'm preaching right now. So if, I feel like I am, uh, being a hypocrite, but no, uh, the Lamictal is like first and foremost, cause with mood swings, it's exhausting for me. And it's especially exhausting for other people. Cause I, I, I tend to forget about the other side of uh, the mental health where there's people that don't understand it, but want to help. Um, but yeah, so, but yeah, definitely uh, stick to your meds. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you're taking the meds. I'm glad that you were not able to harm yourself. I want you to know I'm very proud of you, even though I don't know you. I'm proud of you because you received the help that you needed. Uh, don't ever be embarrassed because you have a mental health issue. Um, what I've been doing, this is known as Mental Health Awareness Month, officially by the government of the United States. Um, so this is why I've been doing these spaces. And it's amazing the different testimony that people talked about when they when they were young some unfortunately uh were, were molested some were raped um it's amazing the bravery that these people have to come on and share it we're not here to judge anybody but i am here to try to help remove the stigma of mental health uh one of the things that i read in the very first space i did on mental health uh that was done by the american psychiatric academy Mental illness is no different than if somebody has a heart disease or if they're diabetic. They are a disease or they are something physical, something that you get. And mental health is the same thing. You take a pill for it. And I, and I just want to elaborate a little bit on the stress part of it, especially for those of us who are mentally ill. It doesn't matter whether it's mild or severe. It applies to anybody and everybody, even if you don't have met, uh, a mental illness. One of the suggestions that you could do is exercise. Physical exercise, believe it or not, reduces the stress because different kinds of chemicals get secreted from your brain is what I had read, okay, in a different article. So it's very healthy for you. Maybe you want to go swimming if you live in a warm climate. Or maybe you can go into an indoor pool, even if it's freezing outside, like up in New England. It might be 10 below. Uh, maybe there's a pool you could go to indoors. Uh, maybe you could go for a jog. Maybe you could, you know, if you have diabetes, for example, and you have a mental illness, even with diabetes, and I'm also uh, diabetic, they want you to walk a minimum every day of 20 minutes. Doesn't matter whether you go and walk at a pace of a turtle or the pace of a hair. They just want that constant moving. So when I lived up north, I would go to a mall. I would walk around literally for 20 minutes. I didn't rush. I just walked. That's all I did. Okay. And browsed at the same time. And I really didn't stop. So exercise is one of the ways that you can deal with stress. If you're into boxing or the martial arts, go to the dojo. You can work out. Start punching the, the punching bag. The, you know, if you're a boxer, go go hit the the bag. Go hit the weights. Lift weights. It's good for you. Men and women can lift weights. Um, walk, go out with a uh, with a pair. Uh, go get something to eat together, or just go for a walk together. Do something healthy and constructive. Okay, um, Symbol. I know that you want to say more, but I'm going to have to have you wait because I want to make sure everybody else has a chance. For those that want to end, uh, come up to the discussion, this is a recorded space. As you see, the red-orange dot with the REC stands for recording. So I just want to remind you that this is a construction space and it's being streamed also on YouTube. My co-host, Tanya, is doing me that favor. Uh, Chris I, is back. So, Chris, I'd like to give you the opportunity uh, to say whatever it is you wanted to share, my brother. Sorry to hop back in. I just wanted to say thank you because I didn't get the reply about you hosting this, Michael. I'm, I just gave you a follow. Um, I'm looking forward to these a lot. Um, but yeah, I do a mental health podcast. It's like a comedic one. I think it like really helps. I do like uh, break the stigma by cracking a smile. But it's great meeting everybody. I'm definitely going to listen for a little bit before dinner. But Michael, thank you for uh, hosting this. This is awesome. You're, uh, you're a smart guy. 
Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the compliment. Like I said, I take absolutely no credit because I literally read off of paper from an article that I got off of the internet. That's what I do because I'm I'm a layman. Uh, and then all I do is I read it and people have their own interpretations. I share what I believe. Uh, but the greatest advice that I can give people is to, to go research it for themselves and talk to an actual licensed clinician or a doctor that's licensed in psychiatry. Why would you go to a cardiologist if you need your tooth pulled? You see what I'm saying? You have to go to the appropriate doctor. That's why I'm thrilled that Tanya shared what it is that she shared about the hormone, which was also mentioned in the article. So, Tim, you're, I'm also following you. Please drop by anytime. It's usually every other day at 630 that I do my, my uh, spaces on mental health. Um, Chris, please go ahead now. Uh, it is finally your turn. I apologize. I don't, I don't see him up as speaker. Not, not you, Chris, not the host, the other Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Oh, I think he's just listening right now. Yeah, yeah, I think oh, I just invited him to speak. Go ahead. You have to unmute, Chris. Well, I see that his microphone comes off and then back on. He may be, he's having a connection problem. I can see it. He's going to go out and come back in. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure how you say your name. Oh, first, before I go back to you, Simbrio, is there anybody else? That well, you know, we have a doctor in our space. Oh, right that's here. right. Well, we have a scientist. Oh, um, Dr. Gail Barnes. Doctor, I'm going to invite her up to speak if she did. Yeah, I actually saw her. But I didn't Honor. know. I didn't want her to get nervous if I invited her. I didn't want her to take off. But doctor, if you want to come up and speak, that would be great. What is she going to do? Say no? <laughs> That's so funny. I, I I also wanted to say, like as Michael talked about, as and I I want to be the good example of what doesn't work for everyone. Um, you know, I, I, if, if anything, look at me and say, okay, I know this is not going to work for me. If you see other people who have other habits or other vices that you think might work with you, mix and match, try different things. Just like Michael said, Hey, gardening, maybe going to the library or whatever, go to the arcade. I don't know, go do something, you know, but don't, don't, don't hold someone as an example as how you should be augment your style and your game plan and your strategy to what works for you. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of something else can be anything. See, for me, I'm I'm an ambivert, so I'm very well to be introverted and extroverted if I have to be. Um, and because of the industry that I work in in technology, um, I can and I know that Tanya can attest to this. When you're an ambivert and you don't want to be around people, you you can you have that switch where you can change yourself to be back and forth. So that's why I'm a really bad example of how what works and what doesn't work, you know. But that being said. Um, I do want to say that it is so important for those uh, for those who don't have a very strong network, have a strong network, have friends, have family, have someone you can talk to, even a therapist. I, I can't stress that any much more than anyone else because I have that. And because of a lot of the restrictions because of COVID-19, there are a lot of. Uh, a lot of therapy um, locations and practices are allowing you to do like telemed, like uh, video sessions over the internet. And they're very, very open to that. Um, I don't know too many places here in New York City that are allowing you to come in person because of COVID-19 restrictions. But I've augmented myself to just do um, audio because I don't do very well with video. But again, that's just me, not everybody else. So I just want to make sure I preface that because I don't want to be the example of what works for everyone. Well, thank you again. I, I appreciate it. Now to my co-host, Chris, did you have anything you wanted to share in relations to this topic? No. <laughs> well, that's shot sweet and direct and to the point. <laughs> Tanya, you have another thought? Uh, oh, my God. I'm just laughing. <laughs> it's so profound. <laughs> but... Before we go, though, I, I mean, I think we had a really fantastic chat. Um, oh, would you mind coming up, Dr. Gale? I would love to meet you. Oh, she left. Maybe she'll follow me. I have to find her and follow her back. Well, but, you know what? Um, I'm sorry. I do have something to say. 
just, just one second, Chris. That's what I tried to warn you. I, I, she was in my space once before, and I invited her, and she took off. If they feel pressured, no matter who they are, they'll get over it. Oh, I'm sure. They'll get yeah. over it. I want to say hi to my friend Yusuf. Uh, we follow each other. Yusuf, oh, he's a speaker. Um, we're talking about stress and mental health. If you have something you, you'd like to share in relation to this or your own personal testimony uh, about this, please feel free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You just have to unmute your mic. Yeah, I think he wants to listen. I know him too. He, he'll, he'll... No, don't, don't pressure the phone. Yeah, no, I'm leaving him alone. Uh, hang on just one second. Chris, you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, so um, you know, if you don't, like like me, I don't have a car. But, you know, even if you don't have a car, you could still, you know, go outside and take a walk. Or if you have agoraphobia and you're afraid to go outside, like like I do, and it's a hard battle for me to even go outside, you can still, like, you know, walk around your house or walk around your room, just do some exercises and stuff or, you know, um, don't be limited by by if you have like limited options to like do do things because you, you can do things in the house, too. And I just wanted to, you know, say that. You know, I, I like Tanya grew up in a house that was constantly yelling. My father, more my father than anybody else. Sometimes my same, same here, Mike. Yeah. Um, so we, we all have, I have that in common with somebody else uh, with Tanya. And now Chris, we have that in common. One of the things I've learned through life experience is I'm more mellow now because somebody yells at me. It's like, I'm used to this. I mean, I, I grew up with this nonsense. Um, I don't really appreciate anybody yelling at me no more than that person would like me yelling at them. Um, and if you, if a person has a mental illness and you start yelling at them and you don't even know they have a mental illness, you might be triggering them to do something worse. So that's why I've always said, be careful what you say. There are people who are ill. And would do you some harm, and I don't ever want to see that. Um, so I mean, I, I don't know. Um, you, you gotta guard your mouth, everybody, including me. I say some things that I wish I never said, and that's my own stupidity for not guarding my mouth. What I have learned though is, is that if I relax and somebody's yelling, I can just think of them and, and try to discern why are they yelling, what made them upset. Did I really do something or is this just the person's personality mixed in with a mental illness? I mean, all these thoughts just come fluttering into my head when that happens. And I sometimes I raise my voice back. I'm certainly not intimidated by anybody. Um, so in your adult life, one of the important things is, in my opinion, is to seek help. If, if, if you've always felt like they were berating you, embarrassing you all the time in front of your family and friends, uh, your mm -hmm. girlfriend or wife or whoever, then you know what? You did nothing wrong. They were, and even if you did something wrong, they were in, in I'm not talking about any kind of criminal activity here, but if, 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 if you did something wrong that was minor, they did something even more wrong by yelling at you when they could have just discussed it with you. It's different, however, between a, a parent and a child or a guardian and a child, sometimes you have to raise your voice and sometimes you don't. There's a time under the sun for everything. You, I think people need to learn how to love their children all over again and love their spouses all over again and learn how to fall in love with each other all over again. And that'll help relieve stress. Try to, try to figure out how you can outbless the other person that you care about. And those that have been prosecute, are persecuting you falsely, maybe one day, so long as it's not going to end in a fist fight, because we don't want that, uh, if it can be done peacefully, or actually you can mail it, mail a gift and just say, you know, I know you're mad at me. Here's just an olive branch that I'm reaching out by sending you this gift. And if they respond back, fine. And if they don't, fine. You were the bigger man or woman that, that sent the gift. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It's whatever's in your heart. And that helps, in my opinion, to break the ice. 
you know, um, as, as Tanya and, and others were saying in the room, the stress can cause a lot of problems in your stomach. Uh, you could get constipated. Um, you could get a racy heart. Um, it's the, the, the longer the stress happens, we're not talking about what we call the good stress, like, oh, good, I'm going to go get a job where you're nervous, but there's a certain stress there because you're not really sure and you know you need it. That stress is normal. That's what motivates you to be on your best behavior, too, and to talk to whoever's giving you the interview. Versus it's staying on your head and starting to cause you to get depressed or anxious or a combination of everything else. So, you know, you have to make that discernment as to whether or not you should seek professional help. And just so that you well, know. Well, sometimes I, I think that we all need our own motivator. And um, actually, yeah, he just followed me. I followed back. So we got CJ Green is in this space. And I actually invited him. I'm hoping he can come up. Um, he is a therapist motivating people to become the best version of themselves. You know, I'm sure he can tell us some really incredible stories of the people he's worked with because, you know, when you have someone that, because I just invited him up. Oh, good. Hopefully he'll take it. We're really nice, by the way. So, and uh, this is being streamed on my social chats, YouTube station. We've been live streaming since February of 2010 and have been very highly trusted on all the different channels. So I have this and then I have Twitch. And I also have it in my um, Facebook group, Social Chats, Healthy Lifestyle. So I'm always messing around with the streaming just to see um, where else can I can get information out. Yeah, we got about nine minutes left. We started at 6.30. I'm going to try to end it to 7.30. Uh, the other spaces that I have conducted, for some reason, we've gone an hour and a half and even a little beyond that. I really don't like doing marathon. That's what I consider it, a marathon um, space like that, uh, especially dealing with mental health and mental illness. Uh, for those that have it, it, you know, there's only so much a person can absorb and concentrate on. And that's the other thing, too. Stress can ruin your concentration. So if it's continuous where you just can't concentrate, that's a good sign that there might be a mental health issue there where you would probably want to talk to a clinician, a psychiatrist, psychologist, get yourself some help. And you know what? If it's not a mental illness, then that's even better. That's great. But at least you know one way or the other because you went there and it helped give you some peace of mind, I would think. Um, back to you, Tony. Oh, what, Hello, what, guys. What, I'm back. Uh, Sorry. My network was a little, little bit tough. That, oh, that, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you, you can go ahead and say your piece now. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I think mental, mental health is really a big issue around the world, most especially from the zone I'm from. Um, I'm from Nigeria. Um, you know, Africa, we tend to treat mental health as a curse. So a lot of people don't know it's an actual illness as opposed to, oh, you're possessed, you know, that kind of thing. And it's really, it's really bad because of how people were treated, you know, tied down. And every time I've seen situations, I try to step in with the best way that I could you know, try to educate people and tell them that, you know, certain people are born this way down to um, bipolar. And a lot of people don't know this things. A lot of people don't even know they have mental health. Um, my mom um, actually had, and we didn't, we didn't understand the situation till you know, after I went, I went to England, I went to school and I saw how certain things were done. And I was like, Oh, seen this is different so my mom might be suffering from this so you know i had to find a way to take her to the hospital and you know she was diagnosed and she was bipolar and all so that explains everything and you know being a, a child a nigerian kid growing up you know every african parent was big on respect so you know there's a difference between respect when you're parents smack you and fear so we couldn't differentiate between respecting our parents because and the fear of our parents but um that kind of built us into 
you know, becoming who we were because we could identify certain things without, you know, being cross-lined. We know, oh, it's bad, it's bad. There's no sugar coating. Don't just go in there because, you know, your ass is going to get whipped. But also understanding it, it gets to a point where it gets extreme. It pushes the younger kids into different um, zones. So for me, basically what I've been trying to do and when I see issues like this, I try to make sure the person understands that, you know, whatever you're doing, put yourself first, make sure your mental health. So don't try and peg yourself with other people or try to leave with other, um, because it, it becomes really, because people don't help as well, the general public. So the better the information and education, the better for the people who are suffering from mental health, because a lot of other people actually make them feel like shit. So they don't really help the situation by not being nice to them. Um, a lot of times they're triggered. So um, for me, basically what I've tried to do and what I've consistently done is if I see people who are trying to push education on mental health, I try to support any way I can. And the most important thing is majorly education, you know, awareness, you know, talking about it, like what Michael, Chris and Tonya, you guys are doing, I think is really amazing. Um, a lot of people have actually committed suicide just off of mental health. And it's not just because of men, the, it's something they, didn't, they can't control, but it's as a result of the peer pressure they had on people. And the people who doesn't have mental health, when you, when you push people to do these things or you 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 in, you insult them on their condition you also in a way you are very toxic and you have a mental health problem yourself because you're not being nice so um i try to tell people always understand that there's a, there's choice action consequences in whatever you're doing so you make sure whatever action however you're going to approach someone always be nice as human it has a ripple effect on the person's um reaction so I think education and more education exposure. I'm not a mental health expert, but from what I've seen, I also try to engage with them based on what they like. So I try to understand what they like doing. So I try to push them around, you know, okay, let's go. You know, if you like doing this, try to engage them on those things. So it takes their minds off, you know, the things. So you have to forge a conversation around them, understand what triggers them, try to take them away from the triggers and put them in things that excites them. And I think those are part of the um, the experiences I've had. Like I said, I'm not a mental health expert, but those are the things that I've seen that's, you know, brought a little bit of progress and a little bit of sanity. It's not a it's not an overnight cure because it's an ailment that's been inbuilt with, with them. So those kind of things help. And I think, you know, the more we keep having conversations like this, the more we see results and we can help people. And then social media doesn't really help too because a lot of people actually use social media to bash people. So it kind of pushed them. So I try to also make sure they are not online to see things that kind of trigger them, but put them on the actual path, um, you know, that makes them excited. So um, those are my two cents and experience. And I hope... Um, we keep talking about this and uh, Michael, Chris, this is really amazing that we, um, you guys are actually pushing this topic out. Um, for me, it's a big problem in Africa as a continent. So in Nigeria, it's one of the, you see a lot of people who are suffering from mental health, half naked on the streets. You know, it's sad because you can't really help. There's little or um, you can't really do much when you see a man half naked or so you, you see a woman half naked. This is not, they're not on drugs. They're just sick, you know, and it's sad. It breaks my heart. I wish I could do more, but conversations like this will go a long way. And hopefully we can find solution in a more holistic point of view. Thank you so very much for all of that fabulous insight. And it's very encouraging, at least to me, knowing that in Africa, um, you're trying to help those who are mentally ill here in the United States. And I'm sure it's probably in Africa as well. Uh, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, the month of October, officially here in the U.S. I don't know how it is globally, um, but you shared a lot of 
wonderful insights. And I'm wondering if I, I'm doing this space every other day. So today's Thursday. So that means uh, Chris, Tanya, and I will be doing another space Saturday. The time is always 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm in the state of Florida in the U.S. So, uh, and I know that in South Africa, there's quite a difference in our time changes uh, as far as what time it is there now. But if you have any other people from South Africa or from wherever that you know, if you talk with them, uh, perhaps you could encourage them um, when you're on your space to come over to this space and I'll do the same for you. You just have to either tell me or DM me uh, when you're doing the space so I can promote it here in America. And of course, we all see the tweets anyway. But that's fine. Um, that, that's fine. That's I'm fine. actually I'm in Boston, Boston at the moment. The, moment. Um, the, the so, time difference with, with between America and Nigeria is like six, five to six hours. So they're five hours ahead. Um, South Africa is about six, seven, six, seven hours ahead. So, but I'm in Boston at the moment. So I, I actually oh, live in Boston. In Boston. So, <laughs> oh, you're in Boston now. Okay. So basically, 6:30 here in the United States, at least where I am, Eastern Time, it's probably going to be about 11:30 in the evening over there by the time they come on. So they may be tired. <laughs> exactly. But if you're here, even if you know anybody and they contact you through Twitter, direct mail, however, you know your friends. Um, encourage them to come to the space. Would love to have them. Uh, it's a very safe space. If we ever find a troll between the three of us, I mean, it's myself, Tanya, and Chris, we'll remove that person right away because we try to keep a safe space. Uh, we, we, we won't tolerate any BS. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, but I thank you for, for coming. Uh, Boston's my old stomping grounds. I'm originally from Massachusetts. So welcome to Massachusetts. Um, and, and keep yourself safe. I, I It's now 7.31, and yep. I'm going to end this space. Uh, we started at 6.30. I was explaining to the people before. Um, I do not believe in doing marathon spaces, when we, especially with the conversation of mental health, because it can be profoundly heavy. Um, so I think one hour is sufficient, even though in the past I have, as recently the other day, uh, gone an hour and a half and even over that a little bit. Uh, and that's because of the different materials that I have to share first before everybody gets invited up. So I don't mind doing that. But usually um, it should only be a half hour, 30 minutes to an hour is fine, more of an hour, because it gives people a chance to take it and digest what was said by everybody that participates. Uh, the listeners are participating by listening um, so they can share it with other people as well. Um, knowledge goes a long way with wisdom. Um, so I, I thank everybody that attended the space. Okay. The total listener was, um, we got 83 total listeners. Wow. Wow. How was there, what, what did we have about 15 people at once in, in the space and then people came in at random and plus the streaming. That was a question to you, Tanya. Yeah, you had a maximum of 22 people at one time, but within the hour, you had total 83 total listeners. Oh, awesome. Hour and five minutes. That, yeah, that's great. So I, I, was only two, I was only two people away from hitting 25. Oh, well, maybe one day I will. <laughs> you get it. That was nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, last thoughts from uh, Tanya, Chris, uh, Sim, uh, you, Yusuf, well, Yusuf, you just said your thing. Um, Symboyo, well, I'm going to start with my host, Chris, first, and then Tanya. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I just want to thank everyone for joining. It was a good show, and um, I know it's really hard to even start a conversation about this. So I want to thank Mike for hosting and uh, Tanya as a co host as well. And all the speakers that were brave to come up and share your story, you are amazing. and. Awesome, and I hope you join us next time. Yeah, everybody have a, a great night. And, you know, it's so wonderful that we can get together and collaborate and share some of our thoughts and our opinions. And and it's a wonderful thing because sometimes it's just having that one little connection makes a big difference in someone's life. So, again, 
looking forward to the next time and you, hope you guys ha- enjoy tonight's um chat on mental health and I, I just wanted to Bye. follow up with what Tanya had said real quick before we all shut down that that little connection that really made all the difference in my life was connections like Tanya and other people, Ariel and uh, other individuals that I have met through these spaces and Twitter spaces. Um, you've all have saved my social life. <laughs> you know, we all think of life in terms of just, you know, the veracity of just one point of view of like living, but like my social life is at a minimum at this point because of the pandemic. So to people out there like Tanya who, you know, they, they do this as, as, as a hobby and also as a line of business, I want to say that they have a humane side to themselves and thank you so much for being such great friends to all of you and uh, to others who are not out there who are listening or who will be listening to the, to this recording. Thank you so much for even being a friend and even listening. Um, even giving five minutes or two minutes or giving an ear to someone, you have no idea how much that saves a life. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Um, those words were very, very well said, very well spoken. I thank everybody for attending. Uh, the next space that I'm going to host with Tanya and Chris will be this coming Saturday, as I said, uh, and it will be 6.30 at night p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. Um, everybody have a great evening. Tanya, thank you again. And Chris and Tanya, if you're able to send me that uh, DM um, with the information would be appreciated. Mm-hmm. And social, I forgot to say something to social. We follow each other. I see you in spaces and stuff. I apologize. I didn't recognize you till now. I thank you so, so very much for attending. She's been with us for the entire space and time. So social, I I really want to thank you. Um, And if you ever need to say something, please flash the hundred. Actually, just hit your icon on the mic. As you know, Michael, it's me. It's my station. We're streaming on my station. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, my, it's my social chat station. It's been around since 2010. Oh, <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> okay. I have, I have to log in into an account. No, that's fine. I didn't realize that. Okay. You see how coordinated I am? (laughs) This is why you have to roll with things. Let things fall like a duck with the feathers in the water just kind of goes right off the body. You know what I mean? So I screwed up again. What else is new? They still love me, folks. (laughs) Okay, folks, stay safe. And I'll see everybody, Lord willing, uh, 7.30, excuse me, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this coming Saturday. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Can I want to